The Inspector General of Police, Usman Baba, has ordered the Commissioner of Police on election duty in Adamo State, Mohamed Badi, to withdraw from the state with immediate effect. The IGP also ordered that the CP in charge of Gombe State, Itamekwa, uh, should immediately proceed to Adamo State for election security of the keenly contested supplementary governorship poll. The force public relations officer, Lumuiwa Dejobi, made the revelation while addressing pressmen on Tuesday in Abuja adding that the IG was committed to a free and fair electoral process. Also, the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, says it is demanding the immediate investigation and possible prosecution of the resident electoral commissioner for Adamo Estate, Udu Ari, who illegally announced Aisha Dahiru of the All Progressive Congress, APC, as winner of the gubernatorial elections in the state. The commission said Mr. Ari's action was an usurpation of the powers of the retiring returning officer empowering them by law to collate and announce the results of the election joining us to discuss this is Jideo Logun a legal practitioner and Daya Kayade who's a political analyst thank you so much gentlemen for joining us good evening so happy to great good evening let's start with um, the fact that um, INEC is demanding an investigation uh, to hold immediately, even though the police has immediately um, removed um, the, uh, the CP that was on duty um, in Adamo State. Uh, many people would say that um, <laughs> the CP was only going with the flow. He did not necessarily understand what he was doing. Uh, but Barstow Logo, I'm going to start with you. Let's talk about the law. I'm sure the police act clearly states the duties of every law enforcement officer. But again, um, many of us talk about the, um, the Electoral Act the, the, as amended, um, but many people have no knowledge, including law enforcement, uh, as to what it says and what their duties are. Could this have been the case of the CP in Adamawa State? Okay, let's specifically isolate this Adamawa situation. What the resident electoral commissioner has done is contrary to section 120 subsection 4 of the electoral act 2022 has amended that says any person who announces or publishes an election result knowing the same to be false omits an offense and is liable to imprisonment for 36 months and definitely the rec is expected to realize that at the point he proceeded to forcefully announced the results. Uh, results were still being expected from about 10 government areas. Apart from that, the Electoral Act mandates the returning officer, not the resident electoral commissioner, you know, to announce such results. And if you now come to the issue of the commissioner of police who escorted the Mr. Logo, are you there? Or have we lost you? Mr. Logo, are you there? Can you hear me? All right, let, let's quickly go to diet. Mr. Kayade, go ahead. I, I'd like for you to pitch in uh, while we get to uh, yeah. Mr. Logo. Yeah, yes, let me continue. Let me continue from where uh, Gideo Logo thought. As he was saying, it's returning officer that is supposed to announce the result. And especially when we are still expecting results from uh, uh, 10 local governments. Now, for even the commissioner of police to have escorted the wreck to announce that result, he cannot tell me that he is not aware of what the law says. As regards of our constitution, as, as well as, uh, as uh, uh, the electoral laws. But let me, let me tell you this, and frankly speaking, for Nigerians to understand this, in my dialect, which I will, which I will see interpret, that is to say, the, the small flies, that flies on top of the water, it's not just dancing on top of the water. There are some invisible drummers underneath the water that are drumming for, that, for those flies to be dancing on top of water. Let me tell you, no doubt about it, the IGP has ordered the, re the redeployment of that particular uh, uh, commissioner of police. 
To have been a commissioner of police is not a small joke. You must have known the laws of the land concerning activities that are operating, especially uh, 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 electoral, electoral activities. We don't, want, we don't want that commissioner of police to be redeployed just alone. We want it prosecuted and we want appropriate positive measures to be met. Else, else, Nigerians, we look at it and say, yes, he has done what he, he was being asked to do. We have seen series of, uh, of, uh, of uh, policemen in this country running foul of our laws, of our rules, and the rules of engagement. The moment they are being transferred, the, uh, when, when, when the accounts files are being brought, they will say, yes, they have been transferred. And that will be the end of it. Mm. Nigeria of today is different from Nigeria of yesterday. Okay. We want that particular policeman to be brought to book. And not only that, even the wreck that had gone outside its jurisdiction to go and announce results should not just, should not only be prosecuted as an uh, NH chairman is being uh, 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 demanded. We want him prosecuted and we want him to be punished accordingly. Okay. Now, let us, let us... D move just hold on, Mr. Kaede, I'll away. come back to you. Let me just quickly, let me just quickly go back to Barista Logu. Barista Logu, there is, um, of course, we know that um, Senator Aisha had an ex-party application marked um, FHCABJ 5110-2023. Uh, she applied for the leave of court uh, to allow her seek an order of prohibition and um, this is to remove the court for the purpose of being set aside um, the administrative decision of the first respondent made April 16, 2023. In other words, she's asking that the court prevent INEC, which is the first respondent, um, they, they're saying, she, she says that they want INEC to be prevented from taking any further steps, okay, uh, towards declaration of the winner, which INEC has already done, by the way. And we saw that the court had thrown that out. Now, Barista Logo, let's go to a video that we got from outside the court, and then you help us explain what this ex parte motion is, and if it does hold any water, even though the court has um, moved to April 26. But let's take a listen, and then, of course, you'll interpret this for us. Uh, an uh, application for leave for my lord to review we call it judicial review for my lord to examine the pronouncement of INEC on the declaration made with respect to the election conducted in Adamawa State this is an expert application we are not expecting anybody as, as you can see when the council to the third respondent announce his appearance, my Lord refused to take his appearance because it is by the leave of the court that the action will be initiated. So you don't just be a busybody and appear before the court. What are we looking before the court is whether INEC can set aside a pronouncement made by one of its staff. We are not here to argue election. Is this, we don't have anything election before the Sovereign Court. What we are trying to do before the Sovereign Court is for the court to make a pronouncement as to whether, looking at Section 149 of the Electoral Act, which says whatever action taken by INEC can only be set aside by either election petition tribunal or a court of competent jurisdiction. So an INEC staff standing to make a declaration, whether legitimate or illegitimate, the right thing to do is to approach the tribunal. It is only the tribunal that will determine whether the act is legitimate or illegitimate. So that is the reason why we are in this court. And all my Lord asks for is we should address him on the jurisdiction of the court and we are gladly taking that and by the grace of god by in two days our address will be ready before the court okay. uh, so 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 barista logo over to you INEC has already declared governor fintiri as governor-elect his certificate of return has been given to him as we speak and 
many have argued that what happened was illegal in the first place. And so this does not even give room for this ex parte motion. But you're the lawyer. Help us explain this. Now, I must commend the judiciary for not stepping on that slippery ground of entertaining that ex parte uh, motion. Uh, uh, motion. request from that lawyer. You see, and it is perceived as part of the, the grand plan to subvert the process of law because you heard him quoting a particular section of the Electoral Act 2022 that is only the election tribunal, a uh, court of competent jurisdiction. But it does not apply in this situation. In fact, if you look at section six of section two of the Electoral Act 2022 as amended, it says that. And uh, the resident electoral commissioner is answerable to the commission, INEC. And INEC came out to declare that the announcement by the REC was null, void, and suspended the collision of results thereafter, which later resumed. And so, and when you say something is null and void, I've been issued in law, it means you have no foundation to build up. And this issue of seeking ex parte order has been dealt with in this country that in the interest of justice and like a law rightly mentioned justice should not only be done but clearly seem to have been done and so this is a plan that has failed in its entirety by the way the reg doesn't have the legal mandate to declare the result of the election it's the returning officer that has that mandate and so that's why i'm joining those who are demanding that the reg the Commissioner of Police and all those involved in these ugly incidents should be thoroughly investigated, prosecuted, and let there be consequences. And for those who may be wondering why INEC is right to the president, is the president that is responsible for the appointment and removal of resident electoral commissioners. But having said that, INEC has a duty to 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 deal with them, to deal with them in situations like this, and that's why he's been asked to step out out of the office and uh, for the uh, uh, the secretary, you know, admin secretary to take over. So we should not in any way condone, you know, this picture of portraying Nigeria as not having the appropriate legal framework for our processes. This is an apparent abuse of procedures. So. I'm joining those who are calling for the investigation, possible prosecution of these uh, accused persons, even though we have what we call the presumption of innocence under our constitution. This is a flagrant abuse of procedures. And the attempt to rope in the judiciary, claiming that once the result has been declared, it's the judiciary that can obtain it. I must commend the judiciary for throwing away that application. It has no space at all in justice. I hope that you can be time timely. Um, many have queried, um, you know, the processes involved in um, picking these people who become finally become resident electoral commissioners. And we know recently before the elections, the, the last batch of recs that were confirmed um, on the floor of the National Assembly, there were many questions raised as, about a couple of them. Do we ever see the the, the independence of our electoral commission sometime in the future, sometime, I mean, I'm talking about the close future, not talking about 50 years from now. Will the, the mm -hmm. independent electoral commission be independent enough? And does, do we need to have a president appointing these people quickly? Yes. Um, you see, we have been talking about independence of not only even INEC, of so many other institutions in this country, of which INEC is part of it. And uh, these are the things that are going to be played out when you don't give such a commission independence to be able to appoint their real officers. For instance, look at this, uh, look at this uh, red that is uh, putting us into this mess now. Information. Information is even in town that it was alleged of some malpractices where it was before. Mm. Why am I saying this? How, how much of... Oh, Mr. Kaidi, I'm so sorry. I think that we've lost connection Richard, with you. And we've been making oh, of some of these appointees. Because understand where they are coming from, 
to be able to understand where they are coming from. Okay. Before you uh, apologies. Uh, apologies. Uh, apologies, uh, Mr. Kayede. As we are now. I'm so sorry, we're having connection issues with you, but we're also out of time. I want to say uh, thank you. Um, Jido Logun is uh, a legal practitioner. Dayo Kaede is a, a political analyst. Gentlemen, I hope that we can have this conversation again um, and have more time to you know, delve into other aspects. But I want to say thank you for being part of the conversation. Thank you, too. God bless Nigeria. All right. Yes, thank you very much. It's our pleasure being with you this evening. God bless Nigeria. All right. That's it on the show tonight. Tomorrow is another day. We'll be back talking more on matters arising on the Nigerian political scene. And sometimes we delve outside the Nigerian scene to bring you politics. I am Mary Anna. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a good evening.